and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, my guest today from the NHA is Wanda Huberman, and she's going to be talking about the upcoming NHA conference. There's still an opportunity for you to register virtually. I don't know about in person anymore. And she's going to be showing an amazing SOS free vegan recipe. It's actually from her mother-in-law and it's an eggplant patty. Please welcome Wanda to the show. Nice to see you again. Thanks, Chef AJ. Great to be back. Yeah. So in case somebody is completely new to my broadcast, what is the NHA? The NHA is the National Health Association. It is a whole food plant exclusive organization that was founded in 1948. So this year at our conference next week, we are celebrating 75 years of spreading the message about the many benefits of a whole food plant exclusive lifestyle without added salt, oil or sugar. That's great. And that's also, you know, it's funny because I had Dr. Ron Weiss on the earlier show and there's other things that NHA, I'm pretty sure doesn't recommend things like coffee and alcohol, you know, so, you know, you I have a lot of that show with Dr. Weiss. He yeah. is fantastic. Absolutely. So uh, tell us a little bit about the conference and if there's in-person room or is it just a virtual option now? It is just a virtual option. We have a waiting list and I sent out an email that was supposed to go just to the attendees and my admin hit the wrong button and it went to our whole membership list and they saw all these things I was telling them about. My phone started ringing off the hook and I'm like, you can still come virtually. So I'm going to hold up this magazine. This shows the amazing speakers we have. If you can see that, I'm really excited about Dr. Campbell, all the people that are on your show, Chef AJ, Alan Goldhammer, Stefan Esser, Joel Furman, John Pierre, Tammy Kramer, Brittany Girudi, um, Frank um, Sabatino, and Gene Bauer is new this year. Wow. So, I think I, I literally have had everybody on the show. So you're so right. Yeah. So we have an amazing lineup. They're all coming into Cleveland. Most of them are coming in Thursday and most of them are staying through Sunday night or Monday. And what's fun about our conference is the doctors just sort of hang out like we do. So I have 350 people coming to Cleveland. I've worked really closely with the chef. I've been up, I've had taste testings, I have meetings. I create, I give them every recipe. And in fact, do I have it? If I Bend down for a second. This is what I started with. These are all the recipes that I have given them that will create six meals. So nobody's going to go hungry. I have taken a Chef AJ approach. I make sure that if you want to stay gluten-free, you can. If you want to stay nut-free, I, I always serve dressings that are balsamic as well as nut-based, trying to accommodate about every lifestyle. That's great. Thank you. That's amazing. So tell a virtual conference, will they, except for tasting the food, they'll pretty much get to see everything that goes on, right? Yeah, we're really proud of the, I use a platform called, oh, sorry, I'm just going to disconnect. I use a platform. I was going to be in another room when we started. I didn't think that was going to be an issue. I use a platform called Hopin. So when you register on the link that you're providing, they will go right into Hopin. And Hopin is a little bit more than just Zoom. You're going to be able to see my schedule day by day. You're going to be able to visit exhibitor booths. You're going to have chat sessions. Um, some people, some of the leaders, I have plant pure pod leaders and exhibitors, and they're going to have their own booth or their own meeting room. And you build your profile. And let's say that you're interested in geriatric care. Sure enough, you'll find somebody else you can hop on, chat with just them. You even will get to ask Q&A. Uh, when, we, when we ask the doctors during the Q&A session, I typically have the mic or somebody else. And we'll go around and we'll ask a few people in the room questions. And then I'll go back to whoever's monitoring the live virtual part. And they'll give me some questions. And I'll just say, Dr. Furman, you know, Joyce from San Diego has this question. So you get to participate in Q&A. When we break for lunch, you get added sessions. Maybe the doctors will come on and talk to you one on, you know, just a little more personally, answer additional questions. 
So we're trying to make it as much as we can. You get to appear at some of the exercise, the balance classes that JP does. We'll be filming them. The yoga that Robin Denning is doing, we'll be filming that. So we really are trying to make it as much as possible like you're there. And I expect you won't, you won't see, you know, you're not going to be at your computer all weekend. So we're going to give you the replay for up to a year. So if you miss something, you can go back and watch the recording of it. Nice, nice. What, are, what kind of food are you serving? I mean, you showed me the folder, but specifically, right. do you know some of the offerings? So the, virtual comp, the virtual attendees will get an e-cookbook. I just got that um, sent off to the printer. I don't have it back yet. I'll pick it up Tuesday, but I'm serving eggplant rollatini on Friday night, and we have a potato bar, and Tammy Kramer is going to be doing a cooking demo that day. We'll have her California mango salad and guac and pico de gallo and every topping you can think of and we're going to have Brittany Giroudi's chocolate cream cheese cake and um I should wow. up and see what other interesting things Thursday night is we're going to have a bonus because we have so many people coming in from the west coast or international Vitamix shows up at six o'clock and they are going to do this amazing demo they're making five recipes for us and then they're going to have enough that we can all taste it so they'll have, they're making, when you enter the room, they're going to have a watermelon aqua fresca that you will be served as you're entering. And then they're going to make a, a spice blend hummus and a Brussels sprout salad and hazelnut and pear dressing for the salad. And they'll stop, they'll end it with a matcha banana ice cream. And so then I said, Friday night, we have the Cauliflower split pea soup. I'm trying to also offer raw food options. We have a number of raw food people coming. So every recipe is going to have a raw food option. That night, it's going to be spiralized veggie noodles with both a sun-dried tomato sauce and a walnut Alfredo sauce. And Brittany Giroudi is making a chickpea and rice salad with Italian dressing. So we'll serve that at dinner. And it just goes on and on with, and with all of the recipes from many people that you've had, including Dylan Holmes. And I have, I'm looking right now at Chef AJ's fa husband's favorite no oil balsamic vinegar. <laughs> oh, so, nice. Well, how, that's neat that Vitamix is doing that, but how can they serve 350 people with one little Vitamix? They're going to bring lots of equipment. They're going to have some stuff pre-made. They're bringing a staff of probably eight people. And we're going to have tables on the side. And they're just going to make sure they have enough for everybody. I figure there'll be, so Thursday night, not absolutely everybody will be there. But I'm based on the hotel reservations and based on the tickets. We take people out on various tours Friday morning before we get started. And I rented five chartered buses that can accommodate 280 people. There are only 37 seats left. So uh -huh. a lot of people are coming in. Vitamix is opening up their world headquarters to a chef, AJ. How fun is that? Yeah. So we're going to tour their headquarters, their culinary kitchen where the chef will make something. They have an interactive museum and you think a blender museum? But they've been around over 100 years where their focus is on whole food. And so you go in this and you see how they started 100 years ago. And that's a lot of fun. Nice. So tell us about these eggplant patties that you promised yeah. us. Oh, I left the recipe. So Chef AJ knows I'll share with your audience. I was all set up in my kitchen and I had a technical issue at the very last minute. So I brought the kitchen to my desk because this recipe is so very easy. It is my mother-in-law's recipe. So for those that don't know any of my history, I've been married to Mark Huberman for almost 32 years, and he was raised from birth on a whole food plant-based diet. So his mother was an expert and she moved in with us at age 90. She, she was still working. She came home from work at age 90. She's hauling the garbage out to the street. She broke her hip and she moved in with us, had a complete recovery, went to the gym every day, lived to 97, and she was just a blessing. And I have been making this recipe for 30 years, never get tired of it. It is so simple. It is 
Is the recipe posted, Chef AJ? I put it in the show notes, yep. Well, I'm going to go by memory since I don't have it in front of me. I left it in the kitchen. But, and it's, you know, like with so much of our cooking, you can just vary it. You, there's nothing needed for per profession or for perfection. So I'm going to show you, I put in, you can see it's still steaming. I was cooking it in the kitchen. It's four chopped eggplants, three stalks of celery, about a package or a dozen mushrooms and an onion. Chop it all up, let it steam. And that's going to be the one thing that's challenging. I was going to be able to empty the water. It is in a steamer basket. So if I can, can I walk off just long enough to get sure. off? I'll be right back. I'll entertain the troops. How are y'all? Yeah, actually, mm -hmm. I'm going to go dump this in the sink. I'll bring it back in this. So if you can chat for just two minutes, maybe give them your code for the virtual. Yes, I've been putting that in. In If you guys want to sign up for the virtual conference, I'll be watching it from California. I put a link in the chat and the show notes. I watched it last year. It was great. They, I don't know if they're playing the same game. I'll ask Wanda when she gets back, but I loved watching Dr. Furman and Dr. Goldhammer play this game called Two Truths and a Lie. That was a lot of fun. So we'll find out if they're going to be playing that this time. And when she comes back, we'll find out if her mother-in-law followed the same diet. It sure sounds like it. I may as well tell you who's on the show this weekend. At 11 o'clock tomorrow, we have Dr. Nandita Shah talking about hormone havoc and She'll be demonstrating an oil-free samosa recipe with an oil-free chutney. Sunday, we have two shows for Father's Day at 9 a.m. Dr. Columbus Batiste, uh, he's going to be with a urologist talking about erections. And then at 11 o'clock, Sharon Palmer, a plant-based registered dietitian with her new book on diabetes. And back to Wanda. Okay, so all I did when I left is I just poured what was in that pan into a colander you can see a little bit of water is dripping. So I am going to dump that in my trash can since I'm not in the kitchen. This is, you've, you've, you've come up with a new system, office cooking. Office cooking, it is that easy. So I'm just putting it into my Holland Mill bowl. We know how much we love that. And I am gonna take a minute, I can't hold it. Use my knife at Well, actually I can. And it's just chopping it until it is, I bring in, I didn't bring in the cook, but I will. Um, it's just chopping it until it is mush. And so once you chop it, I'm gonna set it down so I can chop a little harder. And you, you really won't recognize any one vegetable. It's gonna be all, 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 smushed, all, smushed, all smushed together. All smushed together so that I'm going to actually use an ice cream scoop and I'll show you. I'm going to make patties on my, on my baking sheet. And then I just put it in the oven and it is that simple. Now it does take a while to cook. So I cooked up, I cooked six of them earlier today. So you wouldn't have to wait and I can show you the finished product. And I'm going to take a shortcut. It's not quite as mushed as what I would normally do it, but it's close. And then you can add, or I add three quarters, anywhere from a half to three quarters cups of nuts. So we actually made this when Caldwell and Ann Esselstyn came to our house for dinner. And I remember calling you and saying, oh my gosh, he's speaking at the local university and we're gonna take him to his lecture and give him dinner. And you had told me about your pesto mushrooms. So I made that and they loved it. And my mother-in-law was still living when they did that. So she was here with us and it was so sweet. Anne is like, Ruth, you must tell me how to make this without nuts because these patients can't have nuts and it's so good. And Ruth is like, Anne, it can't be done. <laughs> it really can't. Listen. Well, once I see you make it, maybe I can, it really can't be okay. done. So those four- Wait, wait, wait a second. Are, are the nuts the coating? No, well, they actually become like a binder. So I just have three quarters of a cup of ground up. I put them in just a coffee grinder of almonds and three quarters cups of pecans. You could use cashews, pistachios, well, you can use whatever. So I'm going to dump them in here. I don't see why you couldn't use oats if it's just being a binder. You could maybe use oats. I will have to try that. So then I'm just stirring it up. 
And you can see it, it starts to get a little more thick. And I put it in the refrigerator for overnight, not necessary, but I like the way it forms the patties once it's chilled up, but I'm gonna show you doing it without. So then I just take just a cookie sheet with parchment paper and an ice cream scooper. And I'll show you, I just put, this is really interesting baking at my desk. Yeah, I know. I think you're starting a whole new trend. Hey, Wanda, people are wondering, are you going to play Two Truths and a Lie this year? We are not. We have more fun stuff. Dr. Stefan Esser, if they've watched him on your show, full of energy. He is having trivia night on Friday night and Saturday night. Did you know Dr. Um, Sabatino has played in a band for many, many years? I did not know that. And we're going to be jamming. We're going to have a night of music and a jam session with Dr. Sabatino. What instrument does he play? Um, harmonica and maybe saxophone. I'm not sure. They're working with my mic team. And we, our yoga teacher was a professional singer-songwriter in Tennessee. So she's going to be playing with them. One of our board members plays a saxophone. And I think Robin will play the guitar and sing. So it's kind of open. They're going to do a little bit. But if somebody else wants to come up on stage, we have a mixer. And the, um, the AV team is going to be there to make it a lot of fun. So this is it. You just have patties. I just mush them down a little bit. And then the recipe says something crazy, like bake for whatever amount of time. I baked them earlier. That's the tricky part. They won't, they're gonna just fall apart before they're browned on the bottom. And I'm gonna try next time baking either on 375 or with convection bake. It took me 50 minutes before I could turn them over without them falling apart. The neat thing is if you turn them and they do fall apart, you just reshape them. I mean, it's such a forgiving recipe. And then once I turned them, I baked them for another 40 minutes on the other side. And since I'm not in my kitchen, it's on a plate. I'm going to grab that and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all baked. Nice. Somebody named Jacqueline is recommending maybe flaxseed instead of the nuts. She went away, so, yep. Let's see, what can I tell you? you guys have any questions for little old me? Oh, she's coming there. She's back. So this is it, when they're baked. I just baked six of them so that I could keep batter in case I needed to do something different because I was gonna show you that process in the kitchen, but you saw just a few ingredients, mix them up, it takes five minutes. I didn't start making this until 4.15 peeled the eggplant, cubed everything. The smaller you cube it, the quicker it's gonna get soft. You want it really soft when you steam it and drain the water so that um, if you don't drain the water, it's just gonna take that much longer in the oven to kind of dehydrate the water. Cause you can see the size was when I made them, this is what I always do. So they're that size and they just sort of brown up and shrink down. And they are so full of flavor with that eggplant. That was the thing I learned from my mother-in-law. She never cooked with salt. And she really wasn't somebody that experimented. There was no internet when I was learning to do this 30 some years ago. And so she learned to cook with carrot juice and celery and get flavors from the actual food. So, so she ate this way a long time ago. I don't know if you even realize this, Chef AJ. So Mark was sick as a child. They raised him from birth. He has a brother that's three years older. His parents were not eating this way. They're raising this young boy on a raw food diet, and they are at best vegetarians. And so they're eating all this cooked food, and Mark never wanted it. He was just told this is what's best for your health. It's all he knew. They made vegetable soup and rice and veggies, and he never had any of it and never wanted it. And did they eat all the other stuff in front of him? That's hilarious. Yes, they did. And he just trusted his parents that much that, you know, most people can eat this, but you, 
It's just not good for you. And it, it's kind of like what we tell a lot of people when they're learning to, to try so many new foods that this is not a diet of deprivation. It's a diet of excess. There are so many things. So he says there were a lot of things back then. He, there were no dehydrators. They didn't do all the fancy things like Lissa Maris does on your show that looks phenomenal. He ate raw fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, and as fancy as he got was maybe making a trail mix out of dried unsulfured fruit. Whoa. Yeah. That's something. Hey, Susanna says... Um, the, the show notes say two eggplants, but you mentioned using four. Does it really right. matter? So it's two if they're large, four if they're smaller. So again, right. it's, this was four small ones that I used. Right. And uh, Jacqueline's suggesting for those that can't have nuts, what maybe flax seeds as the binder? Um, maybe partial flax seed. If I put a cup and a half of flax seed, to me, that seems like it'd be... Might yeah. take away my, yeah, might it might overpower the recipe taste wise. Right. Right. But the the oatmeal is it maybe even a combination of flaxseed and oatmeal is good. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Like, any questions for Wanda about or about the NHA? How how long did your mother-in-law live? She left lived a pretty long yeah, time. She, so she breaks her hip at 90. She went to rehab and they have a cool program that for like 20 months some 20 bucks a month, you can go for the rest of your life. Once you've been a patient, most people wouldn't do that. She went five days a week to the gym and worked out and she lived to be 97. I was going to the gym that morning. I was at the gym and somebody was here with her and they called and said, she's not waking up. And she fell asleep that night. We, um, she went to the gym that day. She went to the jewelry store that day. We ate dinner. Our tradition was we watched Wheel of Fortune played a game of cards and then would tuck her in, say, good night, I love you. And she'd go to sleep. And that was our habit every night. And she went to sleep that way and just didn't wake up. That's the way to go, isn't it? That is the way to go. Yeah. She was spectacular. Yeah. That's amazing. They ran, they ran a store. It was really, the store is still there, but it's not open. It was called the natural health food and barbell center. So it was two stores and one side, Mark's dad did all the weight training and weight equipment. And back then there weren't even gyms. They were selling the Scandinavian health spas back when they first started opening. And his mom ordered the produce and sold, you know, vitamins or nuts or whatever. And so when I did meet Mark and start learning to cook this way, she just knew the best places to get the best produce. That was one of the keys of him eating raw. They just had suppliers around the U.S. And they ran a kind of before co-ops were things. They would just have all this excess food if they weren't selling it at their store in the basement. And people would come and get the best mangoes and the best papaya. Goodness. How did she know in the in the 50s or maybe even in the 40s to, to even try a raw diet? How did she it was there was one of the founders of the National Health Organization is a guy by the name of Dr. Gerald Benish. And Mark was sick as a child. They were having some minor health issues. And somebody they knew said, you should go to Cleveland and hear Dr. Benish. And Dr. Benish said, you know, if Mark's condition is serious, he's not thriving as a newborn. And if you can't do this for him, please let me raise him so he'll be a healthy child. <laughs> and Mark's father is really well read and he went home and he just did all the reading that Dr. Benish told him to read. And they said, we're going to start tomorrow. And we all know what it's like, young people, for your parents, maybe to not respect that you don't want your baby to have dairy or meat. You can't, can you even imagine, and Mark was born in 1951. So can you imagine in 1951, they didn't have children's services. I think it was the Department of Health, maybe. His family reported them. They threatened to take him away, lose custody. And my father-in-law just banned them all from the house and said, we know this is going to be the best way for him to regain his health. And it was. And that was history. Great story. Yeah. And the other interesting thing you had said about, um, you know, if you never start. So when I met Mark, he was raising a three-year-old by himself. 
And of course, the three-year-old was raised on a whole food plant-based, not raw, but a very pristine diet. And I was raising a five-year-old that was on a traditional diet. Not only did I not know anything about this way of eating, I knew nothing about Judaism. And so we'd been dating a while. We go out that night and the children are sleeping at my house. And the babysitter goes home. Mark's half asleep. And I'm like, Mark, tomorrow's Easter. He's like, yeah, it's Easter. Okay. I'm like, I have an Easter basket for my daughter. I have an extra wicker basket. Do you care if I split it and give Lisa an Easter basket? And by that time I had carob chocolate and, but it was still processed foods. It, it took me a long time before I went all in on this lifestyle. And so I had, you know, the, the gummy bears or whatever, and the carob in those plastic Easter eggs. And I had the stuffed animal and this three-year-old who had never been exposed to sugar or sweets. It didn't look like food to her. I'll never forget. She just opened up the eggs and dumped it in my daughter's pile. And she played with the plastic egg and she had no desire for it. She was just happy to have what she had. It was incredible. I'd never seen anything like that. That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Here's a fun question from Susanna, who's actually featured in the upcoming issue of the Health Science Magazine. Okay. And she says, what does a typical day of eating look like in the Huberman household? Yeah, well, very, very simple right now because the conference is next week and there's very little time. So Mark and I do something a little different for breakfast. He's the ultimate shopper. He can buy produce in five minutes and always get the best. So he goes grocery shopping. He's been in Hilton Head the last couple of days. So I've been on my own, but he'll make overnight oats with lots of fruit and some nuts. And that's his breakfast almost every day. I will occasionally eat that, but my favorite breakfast, I'm a cancer survivor. And after my cancer recovery, Dr. Furman was telling me how I had to have hypernutrition with so many greens. And I started doing green smoothies with green juice and everything I could to get this hypernutrition. That was way back in 2013. I had a great recovery but I still love the green smoothies. So I will often do a smoothie and then lunch. We know what it's like. Men that can eat all the calories in the world, never gain an ounce and women that can look at it and gain two pounds. So we'll always have a big salad for lunch, but he likes to put his in a toasted pita pocket. And I like to just eat mine with some beans on top. And then dinner, can, and that could be it for lunch. That's fine. Maybe an apple or an orange to go with it. And then for dinner, it'll often be um, wild rice and steamed vegetables, or we do a lot of baked potatoes and sweet potatoes and soup. I'm always batch cooking soup. And so a baked potato with a bunch of soup over it after, after a big salad is a fabulous dinner. Nice. I didn't realize you had cancer. May I ask what kind and when? Yes, I, I was, I went, I really went all in in 2011 and went to True North and did that neuroadaption. And that's when I just didn't look back. I've been pretty pure ever since then with the way I eat it. I love it this way. So you can imagine my surprise when in 2013, I was diagnosed with uterine cancer. Mm. And so they removed the tumor. It was caught early. I think maybe when we live this lifestyle, we're often more aware of symptoms and things happening with our body. So I went very early to a local OBGYN who referred me to an oncologist at the Cleveland Clinic. And I had the benefit of consulting with Dr. Sabatino, Dr. Berman, and Dr. Goldhammer. And they were all like, it would be good to have the tumor removed. And because I had had a pre-op surgery that's um, called an ablation that scarred up my uterus. That's one of the things I asked the doctor before they did the ablation. Is there any reason I would consider not doing this? She's like, no reason at all. And then it, when I had the ablation, they did a biopsy and that's when they found out I had cancer. Uh -huh. But the problem is once they scar up your uterus, I would have tried this lifestyle to see if the tumor removed, you know, got small and went away on its own. But once they scarred up my uterus, they couldn't guarantee that they would spot it. And the anxiety of that was too much for me. So I had the tumor removed. 
And the best story about my oncologist, you know, you go every six months for five years. And every time I went, he's like, what are you doing? You don't fit the model. I don't understand. And I'm like, well, I was happier before I went all, all in and gave up processed foods. I was happier. And he said, that doesn't matter. You just don't fit the model. And I said, I don't know. You're the doctor. And so after three years, he said, I can't ask you to keep coming back because I'm not doing anything for you. Wow. At least to just do regular OBGYN follow-ups. That's amazing. I call it cancer with a small C because between a combination of catching it early surgery, they never even asked me to think about radiation or chemo because the surgery removed it. It had not gone into any lymph nodes. I had a really clean bill of health. So short-term recovery and life has never been better. And it was probably one of the whys that, two whys. I became more animal conscious around 2011, animal rights and and more health conscious. And now that I've had a hormonal cancer, I think I'm probably at higher risk for another hormonal cancer unless I eat a healthy lifestyle. And I feel great. And that was 10 years ago. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Susanna says, what's your favorite part about organizing the NHA conference? Getting to talk to people. The same reason I would be going if I wasn't organizing it is being able to encourage people to come and having that sense of purpose and that sense of connection. You know, it's kind of fun to do the recipes, but that's um, that's a huge lift to get that many recipes and to get the chef. It's fun to go to the hotel and serve it to the food and beverage manager and the chef and to have them have an aha moment that they realize that they can get full flavor profiles and then they like cooking this way. You changed hotels, didn't you? Because you you had trained one and now you're going to another? Yeah. So last year, you know, what's my favorite part is the sense of community. What's my least favorite part is not having control over the kitchen. So last year, I worked for a good six to nine months with these chefs and creating recipes and menus that we're all comfortable with that, that they can, you know, it's easy to pick your favorites out of your kitchen cookbook, but it's got to relate to something that they can buy at a reasonable rate and prepare for 350 people. So it's an awful lot of back and forth. Did that last year with Chef Sam and two weeks before the conference, the whole management of the hotel changed and he left that hotel and his sous chef took over. Now I had been at, that was my second year at the hotel. I'm a trusting soul, too much so I think that was to my detriment went and met with the sous chef and he's like, everything's fine. Got it, got it, got it. The whole management of that hotel decided to take off that weekend and the sous chef was on his own. They hired temporary help because the biggest challenge is all the prep of all the vegetables. Their temporary help didn't show up. So it was a huge challenge. I was never going back to that hotel. I did not have the faith in the management. Chef Sam, who I loved from the year before, happened to stop at the hotel to say hi and let me know that he went to the hotel next door. So I quickly went over and the hotel next door is a little bit bigger, a nicer, it's the Holiday Inn Conference Center. And they had another group that we, you know, since 1949, the NHA has been holding their conferences the last weekend of June. So we try and keep that. And they had another group. I couldn't go there. A month later, she called. That group canceled. And so now we are at that hotel with the chef that did a spectacular job two years ago. Nice. Uh, Well, Susanna says you're the absolute picture of health. I'm curious, Wanda, how did you get the hotel to make enough food? Because, you know, you've been to my ultimate weight loss conference in Vegas. We haven't done one actually, I think since 2019, but they ran out of food. Like, I I don't know how to teach people calorie density that don't understand it. Money, money. (laughs) I tell them that I will pay for three times more than I have attending. Because our people, I said, I want you to prepare three times as much food so that they will not run out of salad. So I have 350 people times it by three, and that's what I'm paying for. And so 
I wish you had told me that secret five years ago, because I mean, how do you run out of rice and potatoes, you know? Exactly. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, I, f- I found that was the most challenging part of the conferences is getting the So food. that's what I tell. I take this bowl. And when I said I eat a, a bowl, a salad for lunch, it's in here. I chop it and I can get a whole lot of density in in a bowl. And I tell them this, this is how much my husband eats every night for dinner. And it's what I eat for lunch. I eat a smaller dinner, I eat bigger lunches. Um, and so I just showed them. And, and now Chef Sam, it's his second year. Or it's actually, yeah, it's his second year. So they've seen it. And he's the one that told me, when you work anywhere else, you tell them to plan for no matter what I could tell them about our people eat a lot. When I said you have to prepare triple what you think in your mind. That is very good advice. Because I remember when Chef Bravo was telling me when he first started working at True North, he didn't know about calorie dense. And he's like, oh my God, how do these people eat? But you know, that's the way it is when you're eating low calorie dense, high nutrient food, you got to have more. Right. And I have to count on the chef to pick good produce. Last year, they were soaking things in water and the arugula was yellow. And so we've had lessons about, you know, it's got to be fresh. They have to, they actually bring in a produce truck and they leave an extra refrigerated truck in the parking lot because there's no way these facilities could put enough food in their kitchen for what I'm, ta- what I'm paying for. Yeah. That's so when people question me, you know, I, I realize not everybody can afford to travel and go to conferences, but when they ask about the price, the food is expensive and you get what you pay for. And that's part of what goes into the price of a conference as well as so many other things. I love that from now on, just give me three times what you would normally give a person. Right. And you can do that at a restaurant, right? I Absolutely. Just restaurants, don't get, restaurants love it when you order more. Yeah. Charge me for three. I just want to eat a good meal and I don't want to be done in 15 minutes. Yeah, that is great. Well, they, I wish you every success with the conference. I'll be watching from here, Thank from you. the seat and interact with people and uh, the replays become available the same day, the next day. How does so that There's going to be a couple of ways to get replays hop in within minutes. So let's say that Tim Williams is speaking Friday night and for whatever reason, you can't start till Saturday, but you want to see him. You'll be able to see that replay the next day. At the end of the conference, I hire a videographer and I hire an AD team At the end, he will edit out waste time, get it to a nice, concise video that just covers all of the presentations and put it on a product that we use. And then I will be sending out that link so anybody can have it. Anybody that paid for the virtual conference and this year as just a a perk of our 75th, I'm going to be giving the replay to all of our in-person attendees. And we have, for the first time, we're doing a silent auction, Chef AJ. I have Vitamix donates their $700 Ascent 3500 blender. So I'm going to put that at a silent auction. We have a paint uh, artist from New York that has shipped me four gallery style prints. And we're going to auction that off. And Windstar has donated a ten thousand a cruise valued at over ten thousand dollars. That's crazy. Do people so people bid on this? Yeah, they'll just you know. Have you ever been to the silent auction? There's going to be a clipboard. You put wow. your name and your amount, and the highest bid at the end of the conference will get. And you and they're allowing it's it's geared to go to the Middle East, like places like Dubai and Qatar. They have several different options. And you don't have to plan to travel. They're giving us till December 31st, 2024 to use it. So wow. I, 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 I can't wait to find out what the what that prize goes for. That's amazing. Me too. Me too. I tried so hard to include the virtual audience in that. How could I? I just don't have the technology. I didn't get the donation until recently. So next year, if, if they're willing to do it again, That's I will fantastic. figure out a way to involve the virtual audience. And we said that we were doing a raffle for the virtual audience. I pulled the raffle because the virtual team that, that I'm working with has done such a great job that most people said, 
instead of raffling off one e-cookbook or one product, Tammy and Tom Kramer helped me with this. We have a swag bag that they're just giving everybody. What nice. I was going to put in the raffle for one person, they're giving it to everybody that attends virtually. It's a, a, a digital swag bag and That's it's valued over $1,500. It's amazing. So the virtual attendees can't bid on the silent auction, right? They cannot. I Not don't just... have a technical way to do that. Sorry, Susanna. Colleen says, will you ever make actual DVDs to purchase? Do we have DVDs? So we have a YouTube channel and you can see a lot of older um, YouTube videos. We have a podcast that Frank Sabatino runs. So it's the NHA Health Science Podcast. You can see that if you go to our webpage at healthscience.org at the top are various buttons. The um, There's a podcast button and there's a shop button. Our members for only $35 a year, you're a member and we will, email, we will mail you an actual magazine and Chef AJ seen them. They're pretty high quality. There are no advertisements. There are a few recipes. I would not call it a recipe magazine. This one, we interviewed Dr. Campbell, but we've archived 40, over 45 years from day one. And we've created a library of e-cookbooks and of the magazine. And you can go on and see any of that. And many of the e-cookbooks, what's different about the NHA than so many other organizations is we've been advocating the benefits of medically supervised water fasting also since 1948. So there are eBooks on water fasting that you couldn't buy. And if you did find them on eBay, they'd be over hundred dollars. Become a member at $35 a year and that's all digitally available to you at no additional cost. Wow, that sounds like a great deal. Thank you. And thanks to you and Mark for all you do to get people to not only eat healthy, but to do it in probably the most pristine way for people, especially people, you know, maybe not everybody has to be completely SOS free, but I think people that are having health challenges, I think it's really a great solution to try that way. Right. It's fun for them to come and, you know, if they want, I don't serve coffee. We don't serve alcohol is not an option. We take over the whole hotel. So it's not like you can go to the place next door. They're just not going to have it. But you can, you know, people can bring their own condiments if that's important to them. We're not the food police, but we are there to prepare to provide an optimal experience and to give it a chance. And I can't believe how many people say, I ate and I ate all weekend and I came home and I felt more energized and I lost weight. And isn't that what we all want to do? Eat so we're not hungry, so we can still sleep well and have a healthy weight. You know, I wanted to ask you, when you went to True North, did you do the water fast? I did. I did. I called. So I it was 2011. I was 51 years old. I called Alan Goldhammer. I didn't have a medical diagnosis, but I was one of these people drinking coffee to keep going. I was what I call a road warrior. I worked on the road. I traveled a lot for my job. And at that time, I thought if I went through Taco Bell and just said, cancel the meat. I'm okay. Give me some extra beans. I wasn't really focused on how those beans were prepared. I thought if I went through Burger King and got the veggie burger and French fries, that that wasn't so bad because I was going to eat a big salad at night. So I'm the only person I know that when I thought I was changing to a whole food lifestyle that was whole food crap food, I gained 50 pounds. So I went and I just called Dr. Goldhammer and I said, you know, I just cannot quit being tired and I can't get rid of brain fog. And I managed litigation and I was in court and you have to be sharp. And I just felt like I wasn't living up to my potential. And in Alan Goldhammer's loving, kind way, he's just like, get a one way ticket. I don't know how long I'm locking you up. You're just going to come here. And so I filed for FMLA, I got a one-way ticket, and I stayed six weeks. I fasted for, Why I've done this for six weeks. I stayed for six weeks because I wanted to stay and learn how to cook more than, you know, with my husband being raised whole food plant-based, his repertoire of cooking was rice, vegetable soup, steamed veggies, and baked potatoes. He'd never had a piece of dessert. He'd never had a cookie. He'd never had a cake or pudding. I'm like, hey, it's like you're a gold hammer, you know? Right. 
I didn't think I could do that. So mm-hmm. I went out there, I fasted for, I think, 19 days. Then I did the two more weeks on just their program. And then I was able to eat everything. And I worked with um, the exercise person out there at the time. It was David Goldman. Oh, he was fabulous. I remember the game changers. And so he took, sent me home with videos on how I could work out. And um, there was a, a Dr. AJ. AJ, what was his last name? I visited with his mom when I was in Sedona. He was an intern and he said, Oh, yes, I remember him, but I, I, he has a lot of brothers and I don't remember. Yeah, know his about. sister and his mom were there when I was fasting. Mm-hmm. I, I had to go. Were you there? Because I was there in 2011 too. I know. We, I went in November at the end of 2011. Yeah, I, went, I went in January. Nice. Wow. Oh, right. But had you ever fasted before? I did when Mark and I were first married in 1991. We wanted a child together. And for whatever reason, we each had a child beforehand without any issues. I miscarried at four months after a horrendously painful pregnancy where they were just giving me all kinds. I was hospitalized on medication. So that was when True North was in their other facility at the, in the horse farm country. And it was just a ranch house. I went and I fasted 24 days thinking I would come home. So that's why I said... I knew better. I still got caught up in the pleasure trap. I went there. I tried. I did not get pregnant. I came home. I was learning more ways, but I didn't focus on how to eat. I was, I thought I was young and invincible. I'm like, eh, I can get away with this. And so I did that roller coaster till I was in my fifties. And I still remember Dr. Esselstyn saying to me, we all have our warranty periods. Some of ours are just sooner than later. And that's how I felt in my 50s, that my warranty period's running out. Mark is a little bit older than I am, had twice the energy. I'm like, that's not right. (laughs) I got to be able to keep up. So now I have um, four grandchildren that range in age from one to 25, and I can keep up with my grandchildren. And I just love this lifestyle. I could not imagine doing anything else. Oh, you're a great spokesperson for it. So Donna, who's watching life, Watching live says, I'm on and off with my weight. I easily bloat with a piece of white bread or anything refined Mm -hmm. and it starts my food bridge binge already gained eight pounds in the last few months. And I can feel my knees complaining already. How do you sustain whole food plant-based? So first of all, white bread is not whole food plant-based. Just so you know that I'll let Wanda answer that though. I think it's about learning habits. And so when it got hard, I just said, I don't have to like it. It can be hard. Lots of things in life are hard. You, your doctor tells you to, to go on dialysis. You hate it, but you do it. You don't say one night, oh, I'm just not going to do that in the morning. It's about a commitment. And so I think it happens in your brain before it happens in your mouth or your stomach. And so I made that commitment that this is what was necessary to have the quality of life. And so I could feel good about how I felt and how I look. Um, I'm as vain as anybody else. I don't want to be gaining the weight. And I still will say that I can struggle with wanting because we do have nuts. Mark Mark is always trying to gain five pounds. I always am kind of bordering on five pounds. And so it's not like I can keep it out of the house. But if I, when I first came back from True North, I called Mark and I said, get it all out of the house. Our house is going to be very compliant. Did I have any children? My youngest child was still at home and she just had to get that food out of the house if she wasn't eating it because my youngest child didn't move in with us. She didn't become my daughter until she was nine. So she already had a whole flavor profile of what she wanted. So I think keeping it out of the house and having that mental commitment is what worked for me. Right. Well, thank you, Wanda. Hey, do you you ever think you'll make an NHA cookbook? So I make e-cookbooks and every every recipe and menu that we're serving along with the Vitamix is going to be an e-cookbook. And if you're not attending, well, go virtually and you'll get it because I'm going to sell the cookbook for probably, I don't know, the, the virtual conference is now 127. I don't know what it'll be online for, but... It won't be anywhere near 127, but you'd have to pay to get the replay later and then you'd pay for the cookbook. 
Um, spoiler alert is that Mark and I have a publisher and we are going to start working on a book at the end of the year. So there probably will be recipes. We'll see what direction the publisher takes us. Well, that's great. Another congratulations then. Thank you. All right. Well, I just feel like he knows the history. He's been going to these conferences. So he first spoke when he was 10 years old about what it was like. And, you know, if you're raising children, I have a children's program because when I met Mark, I mentioned we each had a child. Those kids had to go to a conference. So our children grew up. Dr. Goldhammer was bringing Gar. His wife was speaking back then. So our children grew up with Gar Goldhammer. Dr. Furman had three daughters that were the ages of our daughters. And there wasn't an organized program, but there was just kids played back then. They didn't need organized programs. So now we have, we're creating, um, Tammy and Tom Kramer are doing an ice cream demo um, for the kids. Brittany is doing dirt pudding and gummy bears and we're having a dance party and we're having a foraging session where they can go find food in the woods and just, they have their, I have a whole separate children's program. That's great. I remember the year I spoke, I was making balloons for them and Dr. Frank oh, right. know, wore the hat. It was so cute. So Here's a question from Laura. She says, many of the plant-based conferences, such as the Plantrition Conference and the American College of Lifestyle Medicine Conference, move their conference every year to a new city so that more people can be included and there can be a variety of cities experienced. Will you ever consider doing your conference in a different city like the other conference? I I will. Um, I had thought that I would go to Atlanta and I checked out Atlanta. There were too many prohibitions. So the thing that happens is I look at the governor of that state. We were able to have our conference in 2021 because Ohio did not mandate. They were like one of the first ones to, to um, take away COVID vaccination requirements and social distancing. So I don't want to go to a state that if there would be some outbreak, I'd be forced to shut down. And I can't go to somewhere like New York City where just the cost of what I'm doing is too expensive. So the cost to come to Cleveland, you're paying $149 for a hotel room. Very few cities do you get a really nice hotel room for $140 where Wi-Fi and parking is included. So it's economy. And I said that I work so closely with the chefs. When I first started doing this, I was still working my other job and driving to Cleveland and planning the conference. So it's a logistical matter. If I can find a conference that will give me that access to their kitchen and their chefs, yeah, I would love to move it. Well, if you come to Sacramento, you've got six of the greatest plant-based doctors here and most of them SOS free. And you have even 100, 100 year old Dr. John Scharfenberg and six of the restaurants already do SOS free without being asked. That is a great idea. How, and the other issue that stops me, I had one town in West Virginia that said, all of our restaurants in town will give you SOS free options and you can just walk down and check out those options. But there was no easy way to get there. People want to fly in. They want to take an Uber for, you know, 10, 15 minutes and be at the hotel. So are there, is there a major hotel in Sacramento? Oh my gosh. And there's an international airport that doesn't get crowded like some of the others. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. I'm going to put Sacramento on my list. I think you'll like it. You can get Goldhammer can drive here. He's two hours away. Dr. Doug Lyle can drive. Dr. John Scharfenberg, Dr. Neil Nedley, Dr. Roseanne Alviera, Dr. Rajiv Mesquita. There's six off the top of my head. And I can tell you one of the other things I do is, you know, planning who we're having as speakers. And I would love to have even more speakers. This is the first year I've had enough speakers that most doctors are only giving one presentation. That's quite pricey when you don't double up and you haven't, you know, you bring that many people in. Um, but I, it's important to me ha to have diversity of color, diversity of age, diversity of sex, and I'm working on it. So I am always open for suggestions. It is nice to have a name that is known because that's what it takes to get people to sign up. So I'm always open to those suggestions. Well, if you ever want diversity of species, Bailey is happy to bark at your conference. 
I love Bailey. I would take him in a heartbeat. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, but many people are saying they're happy that the conference is in Ohio. We need East Coast people to have a little love too. So great. That well, I know your conference will be great. I mean, you've done this so many times and there's probably some pre-conference jitters, but it, you always do it with such aplomb that I'm sure everyone's going to have a great time, whether they're watching in person or whether they're doing the virtual, which I've been posting the link for all throughout the show. So. Well, I just got the digital cookbook today. I'm going to contact my virtual team, see if I can't get that up. And maybe you can even cook and follow along. You can make these eggplant patties. They they are addicting. You're just not going to believe the, the flavor. You know, they kind of look a little bit like latkes to me. They do look a little bit like latkes. They don't, they don't taste anything like oh, latkes. They look great. Well, thank you, Wanda. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Another great recipe, oil-free samosas with oil-free chutney and Dr. Nandita Shah talking about hormonal havoc. Take care, everyone. Hope to see you online at the end.